In this video, you will learn two, yes, two, correct two variables that lead to an A plus trade. Yes, just two. We teach you this in a video from a detailed trade review by me of a stock trade made by a trader on our desk. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafiore, and we are a proprietary trading firm in New York City with numerous highly successful traders, almost all of whom started their trading careers with SMB. We hope that you find this channel to be a terrific place to learn and grow as a trader. In this video, you will learn two variables that lead to an A plus trade, just two. Those variables are stock selection and an important intraday level. Let's bring in an SMB trader to teach you this important trading lesson during an in-depth trade review. So my name is Yanni. Uh, this is an overextension backside fade and specifically trading the second leg of that. And this is on Billy. So the trade strategy is to look for an overextended stock. And the way that I define that is up for ATRs in less than five days. It's opening outside its second standard deviation. So ATRs event. are average true range? Yes. So up. Average true range means how much a stock is going to move uh, during the trading day. Yeah. So up for ATRs in less than five days opening outside its second standard deviation Bollinger Bands. And I use the 20 simple moving average for that. Uh, it's extended into a key daily resistance zone. It's up multiple percent, uh, percent in a short amount of time. For this specific trade, it was 200%. And I think it's relative to how the stock sort of moves, but we do want to see multiple percents up in a short amount of time. And we also want the stock to be under the 200 day simple moving average. That shows that this is still a downtrending stock and we want to trade the overextension into that. And we also somewhat want a catalyst that's contrary from the daily trend. We'll go more into that specifically with um, the catalyst for the day and uh, the Chinese uh, COVID So thing. if I can just jump in here. Sure. So lots of times people say things like, I think a stock has gone up too much. I think a stock is overbought. I think the stock is going to go down. And that's not good enough. That's not sufficient to be a professional sustaining trader a, a large professional sustaining trader with edge. That's not good enough to trade an idea with a lot of money. That's not good enough if you wanna truly be a consistently profitable trader. That's not good enough if you wanna find out how good you can be as a trader. That, that's way too general, way too general. And what you're doing here super well, super well, really well is your stock selection. This is elite stock selection. It's elite stock selection because you are, I'm sure you're sitting at your seat saying, Billy's up too much, right? I'm sure your brain is, is saying that to yourself. I'm sure the guys around you are saying that. I'm sure the guys you're in headsets are saying that, yeah, undoubtedly. But you're, you're taking many, many steps further. You're being professional. Amateur is, I think a stock is up too much. I want to short it. That's called being an amateur. Some people might say that's called being a piker. All right, professional is, let me variableize. I made that term up a long time ago. I'm going to keep it up. It's my firm, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to variab variableize. What, I'm going to define what that actually means. I'm going to define what a stock is up too much means. And you're giving it ways to measure those opportunities that is that is much more specific, much more professional, much more measured than somebody sitting at their seat having a hunch or using their intuition. And then what's great about this is that you can backtest a lot of this. 
What's great about this is you can tag and measure it going forward. You can tag and measure some of those variables. There's so much you can do with this. This is a, this is a powerful, powerful way to go about trading. So love, love, love the stock selection. Really, you know, I've said this a bunch of times. I wrote I wrote this in one of my books. You're only as good as the stocks you trade. You know, stock selection is super important. If you trade things that aren't going to trade well, you're you can be the best trader in the world. You're not going to make money. If you trade things that you've chosen well, your stock selection's a 10 out of 10, it's spot on. You're giving yourself, you know, you can be a, an above average trader and have a really solid, solid day. Okay, so I had to point that out. This is really as good as it gets in terms of stock selection. If you wanna learn three real world setups that our professional traders use, including the simple but highly effective setup that we teach all of our new traders, and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven-figure big money earner. Check out the free online trading workshop that we're currently running. This is a 100% free intensive workshop where you're going to learn more in a couple of hours than from years of online education. So don't miss it. Great. So for the tape, we want to see shallow volume on the pops and we want to see an increase in volume under the low of the day. So once we're on our backside, and the right side of the V, we want to see that continued weakness for the second leg of that trade. Uh, we also want to see heavy offers, uh, plus an unwillingness to support the bid once we get under low of the day. And we have a really good example of this um, when we get into it. But I think we've got a great example of this. Yeah. I don't think it's a good example. I think it's a great example of using the tape well. Uh, in terms of execution, we want to short the momentum, break lower if the volume comes in, or look to short the break and retest of that uh, level of consolidation. Since this is a move to move trade, we will look uh, to exit when the momentum ends, and we'll use the move to move reasons to sell on the next slide. So the potential reasons to sell would be a sharp, unsustainable move lower if it comes into a price target or indicator and begins to reject that price. I like to use the 10 SMA on the five minute and the 20 EMA on the one minute as my moving averages for a trailing stop. Any sort of headline risk that would make the trade invalidated, it is rare, but just had to throw that in there just in case. Uh, we, if we see heavy buyers on the tape into a key level or a consolidation break to the upside, or if we fail to hold below a key level and uh, the trade just takes too long and our time stop is hit. This is a quick momentum trade. It should happen relatively quickly. Very strong, very diligent example of laying out a reason to get out of the stock. Very well done there. Thank you. So this is the bigger picture. Uh, so we get research emails every day. This came in my inbox specifically. Uh, this section really stood out to me. And we've had optimism in China with specifically opening up, right, from the zero COVID policy, right? And all of a sudden, now this comes in our inbox saying that a lot of hospitals are struggling to deal with the surge in cases, right? So that's kind of contrary to what has been happening with uh, the well, when we're opening up, right? So that in combination with FXI, the Chinese large cap, stocks being up 40% from November lows. And just the overall concept of many of Chinese large caps having been uninvestable, this has caught a rapid bid over the last few weeks in this optimism, right? So that's why we're up so much in this. They announced, they announced they're opening up that sector, the Chinese ADRs mm -hmm. really traded strongly. New catalyst comes in hospitalizations are up, COVID is up, unintended consequences creeps in, a catalyst perhaps for a pull-in. Exactly. Yep, yeah, precisely. So I think um, you asked specifically on our Discord call if we could track the COVID cases. And um, one of the traders, Dan Bennett, brought this to me, actually, to specifically see the numbers in real time. So this is just an example. I mean, 
I don't think it's real time data, but every day this updates to see the COVID cases. So you can see that there's been. Yeah, a we had a discussion at our desk and we were saying, hey, wait a second. China's opening up. That's a positive. People may be underestimating the the negative catalyst if COVID cases go up and hospitalizations go up. And we start to see uh, when hospitalizations were going up, the market slid a little bit, right? Exactly. And we get over our squawk uh, every once in a while, uh, the guy comes on and says hospitalizations are up. And then the, we notice the market slide down a little bit. So the thought process that we we're talking about in our discord was, okay, instead of just waiting for the squawk guy to randomly or however he figures out to give us an update, on hospitalizations, let's start to see if we can track this. You guys are way smarter than me. And so I said to the guys, hey, somebody figure out how to track this in real time, if possible, whether or not hospitalizations are up. Obviously, uh, the information about hospitalization, uh, smart money people will say, isn't always accurate. They're gonna under inflate those numbers. Uh, so that was an added challenge to my uh, query to you guys mm -hmm. and and that'll be an ongoing challenge but yeah I'm, if you're noticing that hospitalizations going up is causing the market to go down let's have that information in real time so we can track it and and see what's going on and i think actually i'm not sure by the way when the cpi number came out whether or not was it the day of the cpi um it was, it, was a, it was the day before. I, I think believe. it was the day before. And we we thought the market was going to trade pretty strongly on that day. And then it traded off. And then I, I'm not sure people uh, were thinking enough about the fact that hospitalizations had gone up and been announced that day, that that was a drag on the overall market. All right, let's see what we got. So with Billy's intraday fundamentals, we were up 4.5 our ATRs and on a five day uh, average. And this was the most extended in the Chinese basket. I, like, I have a list on trading view of just all the ADRs I like to trade. And this one was by far the most extended out of that group. So you didn't just pick Billy, you picked the best one. You, you picked the best China ATR, ADR for you to trade on this day. Mm -hmm. You looked at several of them. Good, very good. Yeah, so this is up 220% since November, and it was also up 110% from their earnings report, which was only nine days ago. So this is starting to get pretty extended right into a very key level as well. And this also is the third time that we're consecutively opening outside our standard deviation uh, Bollinger Bands, our two standard deviation Bollinger Bands. And we're coming right into our 200 day moving average as well. I'll show on the next slide, uh, a trading view indicator that Nano and Armand brought to me, and I slightly modified it with a signal outside its Bollinger Band, just so I could clearly see the signal. And historically, we've seen mean reversion just by looking at the indicator. I'll go into this more later on specifically back testing like the signal, but you could just see that even over the last year and a half that this signal was working. So from a statistical standpoint, the ATR is around two. The average daily volume is 10.81 million. Our vol this day was two. The shares float is around 306 million. The short float is 9.4, which is a little bit higher. I'd kind of want to see that a little bit lower potentially. And the institutional ownership is 25%. So this is just an example of the indicator on the bottom. You could see the ATR in days. And every time we open up outside our Bollinger Bands, it spits out a little diamond on the bottom. And I just highlighted with the arrows, the times that it had the signal. So there was a few times where we did get the signal and we did have really strong mean reversion days. So that was something that I was looking at. Good, good use of technology. This is our daily chart. I noticed that we broke down somewhat in September from a really nice consolidation pattern. And then we recently back tested right into that area. So this 
level on our daily chart is pretty important as well. This is our hourly chart. I noticed specifically that it's holding the 50 day moving average, which is the middle green line. We bounced off that three times. And then once we got below that, we really disconnected from price. That for me was like sort of the confirmation that we were on our backside at that point. Here's our intraday chart. So on our longer term charts, we're at the downside. On our, and now we're gonna show our intraday chart. So we look at longer term charts first, and then we look at intraday charts second. We're thinking about using technical analysis. What do we have on the intraday? Yeah, so on our intraday, we do have a first move down. Well, first, let me start by saying we gapped down that day on this catalyst. We have our first move down, consolidation, midday, and then we start our second leg at around 10 to 10.30. And here's the one minute chart just to clearly state that we have the first move down, consolidation, then the start of our second leg. So we have a longer term technical charts showing weakness. We have our intraday charts showing weakness. We have alignment there. Mm -hmm. Specifically, we see a bitter in the 2350 area between 940 and 10 o'clock. And many people were calling this out in Discord, I remember. And I that, was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it just wouldn't drop in that Jeff area. Jeff was as well. We were, yeah, we were, no, it was very noticeable. Yeah. Really good level. So at 1009, we get uh, a liquidity swipe under that level. It was very quick. And I almost was confused, like, why that happened. But once we got below that for a second time, we really started to trend, right? But once we got below that, that same bidder completely disappeared. And we start to see offers into uh, 2360, 2350. Yeah, so that second time at 2350, the bids get taken out. And we continue to trend lower. On a scale of 1 to 10... How important is that intraday 2350 level? I would honestly give it a nine or a 10. I agree. That's probably one of the most important technical levels on the day, if not the most important. I agree. It, it was a clear hold in that, in, at that price. And, and, and sometimes we talk about areas, like it actually was that price. It didn't trade below that price, that 2350 price that specific price. Usually we talk about, oh, it's an area, 2350 area. No, this was like, it didn't trade below that price for an extended period of time in something that had been, that's that's in a downtrend on our long-term charts. It's in a downtrend intraday and that and has a news catalyst on it. Okay, so let's see what we're gonna see. So on the top right, we have the Billy montage and- So it's touched that price once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven times and has not traded below there. Mm -hmm. Fair? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times. It can't trade below the same price. What? Like that? That's unusual. Yeah. And as you said, that's why I asked you that this is a nine or 10 out of 10 in terms of an intraday level. And so if it got below there and it had really held up and it was a nine or 10 out of 10, and it got below there, that's significant. That's a significant sell signal. So we get that liquidity swipe yep, just, so it just briefly. Yep, it just went below there for the first time. So that's the first time that 2350 bid has ever dropped mm -hmm. since the open. On a day when the sector's in play, on a day when this, this stock is catching a lot of attention. Why wouldn't it trade below that 2250? And then it does. So we're slightly holding above there, but you notice that the bidder that was previously there sort of is not there after a few minutes. So just speeding this up a little bit. So we just got a slight pop back into the 2360 area. I think it's around here where we break down. So we're coming back into the 2350 important price again. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna do a little bit of volume at that 2355 area. Mm -hmm. Notice that this is the first time that we're in twenty at twenty three fifty and not quickly disconnecting from price. The previous times where we did come into that area, we quickly popped twenty thirty cents above that, right? But this is the first time we can't get above twenty three seventy ish as well. So just speeding this up to the actual breakdown. All right, and now the offers are below it too. Now it's below it and the offers are below it. That's a short right there. Yeah, this is where I would enter right here. So go back to when it gets below 50 cents for that second time. Stop. We didn't see that last time. It's a short. Mm -hmm. Okay, play. Stop. Okay, play. Stop. Can you stop it? You see how 45 didn't drop? Mm -hmm. When 45 drops, you short more. For, moment, for momentum trading, for scalping, uh, or even for other strategies, but it gets below that price that th this is using your tape reading skills. It gets below that 50 cents and it was like 40, I think it was 48 cents. My eyesight's not that good anymore. It was like 48 cents or 47 cents. Um, so it's, it's below 50 cents and the offers are coming below 50 cents for the first time. That's significant. Risk on. But then you want to look for hey, what price is it not trading below after it got below 50 cents? It wasn't really trading below 44, 45 cents. When it trades below 45 cents, bam, add more and, 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 and trade that. All right, let's see what we got. Yeah, so after this, we just consistently step down on the bid. Any pops get uh, sold and continue that selling pretty much. Thirty-five is holding up a little bit. I, I would hit more when that guy drops. Sort of seeing the 35 to lose. And that's what you're looking for. Like, how do I add? How do I add? How do I add? Yeah, there you go. Thirty-five is holding up nicely, isn't it? That that twenty-three thirty-five is holding up. Yeah, and now, now you want to add more. Now it got below there. All right, let's see where this thing ends up going to. Let's let's fast forward. Show us that chart. Yeah, so we have a move basically from. 10, 10 to 10, 30. That's pretty much where my target was. And once it gets below there, I mean, it has a pretty 
steep down move. Yeah. I just want to make one more point sure. before that. There's two reasons why this is a terrific trade. It's two reasons, two reasons, two reasons. The first reason is your stock selection. The second reason is you found an awesome intraday important level to trade off of that that 50 cent area. If you just found stocks that were in play, you just did a great job with your stock selection. And then you just found nine or 10 out of 10 intraday levels like that 2350 ish that you, you identified. You could have a trading career. That's how significant putting those two variables together are those two variables together are enough to have a trading career you could be you know a, a very very profitable elite active trader putting together stocks in play and super important you know nine out of ten ten out of ten intraday levels together you would obviously do this long and short so there's going to be some we can flip that around. There's going to be some stocks that have really good news, have really good daily charts, have really good intraday charts. They can't get above like $40. They can't get above $40. Seven times it tries to get above $40 and it can't. And then it does. And then you buy it and the damn thing fin finishes high a day. Now, or, or you just scalp it out. You could momentum trade it out, scalp it out, swing it out. All right, that, that, is a, that is a good enough pattern to build a career out of. The key is finding enough of those trades. The key is being big enough in those trades. The key is you mastering those trades for you. But that's how good of a trade this is. And I'm sure there's some people that are watching and I'm sure some of you guys in your class are like, eh, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, just that, that's trading. And there's so many people that sit around and are like, I think the market's going to go down. I think volatility is going to go down. I think the Fed's going to have to raise rates even more next year. And I think this new Avatar movie is going to be awesome and I want to buy Disney. And, you know, I think that uh, Amazon is going to get whooped over the next couple of years. And, you know, I think that we should be buying more of this mRNA because we think China is going to have to use our vaccines and on and on and on. And, and you will sit on lots of desks and people will postulate about what should happen. And they'll read a little bit of news here and have strong opinions. I think Tesla is going to go down because that damn Musk is spouting off his mouth too much on Twitter and he's killing the Tesla brand. You know, it, it's it's just on and on and on, okay? And yeah, there's really not, that's just not particularly, that's not edge. That's not really a professional trade. That's a, a, a thesis, that's an opinion for which now you build on to, to make into a trade. This, this is a trade. This is, this trade works. This is sophisticated. You know, and, and sometimes people think, oh, that's not sophisticated enough because I'm not predicting where the price, you know, I think oil is going to go up because there's going to be this terrible war that's going to be last longer in Ukraine and Russia, and it's going to spill over to Europe. We have to get long oil. You know, that, that's, that's the type of stuff I got to do to be sophisticated as a trader. This is sophistication. You are finding a stock you're doing a great job. You're finding a stock that's overbought. Even if there was no news catalyst, the stock's overbought. It should pull in at a minimum. It's up too much. And then you're putting together a news catalyst in it, which is you guys got way too, you're over your skis long, the China names. You didn't think about something that's super important. The Chinese economy may not, may not be able to open up the way you all wanted to. Maybe well, but we don't, we're not sure. Maybe you're just, you're too aggressive. And then we've got this level, the damn stock won't trade below a, a particular price seven times. And then it finally does. 
That's professional trading. No matter what anyone goes on and tells you, that is a professional trade. There's price action confirmation behind a trade. There's alignment of technical levels. There's terrific stock selection. Pick a great stock, pick a really great level, find a really great level, make trade decisions. There's a su it's a super way to trade. Okay, now as Dr. Steenbarker says, I'm gonna go back on my meds, go, go back on my meds and let everybody enjoy the rest of their day. Um, all right, let's finish this up. All right, thanks. So this is just the ideal trade management short under the consolidation, right into that uh, reclaim of, I can't see exactly where the price is, but where that second arrow is, we came into an important technical level. That would be an area where you'd probably want to take some off. And then at the third red arrow, we reclaim the 10 moving average on the five minute charts. That would be the final reason to sell. So this unfortunately was my execution on the day and I'll go into why it was so poor and this is pretty much why i was doing this playbook to begin with is that this is not really the type of execution that is sufficient for this trade isn't bad for a scalp but taking off the trade way too early is not a part of my playbook it's not a part of my reasons to sell it was honestly just a mistake into that right so the reason why i did scalp that trade instead of swinging the bat hard in that sense is off the open i was already up on the day and sort of just protecting profits um on the day right something so, that so i just want to step it so there's sure. these are these are two different thoughts so scalping is a different thought than swinging the bat hard swinging the bat hard means you put on max risk yeah scalping just means in this case, you had a you had a choice to scalp it, momentum trade it, or swing it for intraday. Right. Swing it intraday yeah. for a reason to to cover. Okay. So, go ahead. Yeah. So maybe you did both. Maybe you didn't swing the bat hard. <laughs> maybe you covered too. Maybe yeah. you should have swung it. Yeah, definitely. And the reason for that we've is all, we've all done that. That's why we do these. That's that's why we do yeah. these reviews. So a completely separate trade. I did short Billy for an opening drive trade. Um, yeah, off the open. So it just, I wasn't confident to take that second trade because, you know, if you do swing the bad heart, you could, and it ends up not working out, then psychologically you're not a good, in a good spot. But obviously, as we've seen that this is the trade to do that. So Essentially, that's what I could do better for that. Moving into technology, there's essentially three things that I think I can improve with this is uh, specifically making a cloud quant alert to find stocks that are gapping outside the second standard deviation Bollinger Bands. Love and, that. Love and that. The four love, ATRs. that. love that. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Instead of just going through charts, it just saves so much more time awesome. to find that. Right. Very can, promising. Yeah. You could also use the same alert and turn that into a script and awesome. get data collection from that, right? And then the last thing is just a trading view indicator and the strategy tester, which we did already, right? So changes I need to make and how to implement them. So this is a new format that I've tried. I, it's inspired by Ray Dalio, actually, the, the FISA process to implementing something. So. The goal that I set out for myself and this trade was just to gain confidence in this overextension signal to give me the confidence to swing hard at that area, right? So I'd wanna discover more trades around this setup, share this edge with other people as well, and scale it as a bigger part of my playbook, right? And the pro biggest problem is I just don't have the statistics around that signal. Uh, since I only have a discretionary back test, it's really impossible to have a clear confident signal in that sense. So the way that I was going to design a plan to do that was just the way that we talked about technology wise doing those three things, right? And actually doing that somewhat looks like taking time out of my day every day just to code a little bit of that technology, essentially.
So, yeah, so, so one thing about that, so as a discretionary trader, one of the things you can do is you can hit it hard below that 50 cents. You know, you can hit it when it gets below 50. You can hit it when it gets below 45. You can hit it when it gets below 35. And you can, you can use your trading skills. I'm not suggesting this is the answer for you to trade this better, but it may be the answer for some traders. So one solution is to go and get yourself some data behind this so you have more confidence. Another solution is to use your trading skills, which just essentially means uh, you will be able to tell when it's more likely to trend down by watching tape and watching examples of when stocks get below important levels like that. So you will you will be able to tell by, I mean, never went above 50 cents again. Yeah. Uh, when it got below 45 cents, never got above 45 cents. It certainly didn't get above 50 cents. When it got below 35 cents, it didn't get above 50 cents. So my point is, it, it didn't get above levels that would have caused you to exit. Yeah. And as you said, it trended down, trended down, trended down. So sometimes the answer for a discretionary trader is to get in it and just to watch to see if it continues down or to watch to see how it's going down and just make a decision from there mm -hmm. based on your tape reading skills and your trading skills. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, it's just not lifting the offer for the, for, for the most part. I don't have to do anything. I'm going to stay in it. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's essentially um, uh, if okay. you want to cover anything else. Well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Yanni. In this video, you learned two variables that lead to an A plus trade, just two. Those variables are stock selection and an important intraday level. Okay, do you wanna learn more about scalping to grow your trading account? In this video appearing on your screen now, we will reveal the little trick to scalping that can make it much easier. Click the video, scalping was hard until he discovered this little trick to learn this simple trick.